Hello, Ahmed Kanani here with another video from the Lucre Studio Tips and Tricks series. This time we've got an update, the time series intervals. This is a, a very recent addition feature in Lucre Studio. And today we're going to have a quick look and see what does it mean? How can it be useful in our dashboards and reports? Okay. So let me data. I don't need this one. Property. Yeah, we'll need that. So here I have a very simple time series chart and time series chart the x axis should be a date range so it should be a dimension of the type date and then we can have metrics plotted against time so we can see the trends and paths this one is connected to this sample google sheet which has the dates from 1st of january to the end of january we have our main metric which is number of sales and for each day, we have a lower band and upper band. Let's think about it as the minimum and maximum values that we expect to see on those days. Or the maximum would be the target and the lower bound would be something that we don't really want the sales number to go below that. Okay, so these could be... So these can have different meanings, but the exciting thing is that now we can plot them on time series chart and we can see the boundaries between these two values. Let's start with that. The main difference between the intervals and what we previously had, which was reference lines, was that a reference line was one single value plotted against time, just like a line, just like one of these horizontal lines. So previously we could go to the style tab, we could add a reference line, and then we could Give it a value. Let's say now we have from 0 to 15, let's say 12. And it will show up always on the value of 12. It's a horizontal line. We could have, instead of constant value, we could have dynamic values calculated based on the value of a metric. So, for example, here I have number of cells and I can aggregate, I can reduce the number of cells over time to a single value. For example, by averaging it, so this is the average of number of sales, which is still one value plotted against time, I can have the minimum, I can have maximum, but still I cannot have a reference line per day. So I cannot have, it, have this line fluctuate and follow the trend and say that, okay, for the first of the month I had one target, for the rest of the days I had another target, or I want to see like lower and upper bands, things like that. It was this very simple reference line as the name suggests. But now we have intervals. So let's take a look and see what are intervals. When I click on that, I have some configurations, several options that I can play with. I will keep the type on area interval and we will come back to it to see what other options do we have. We can give it a label, but Right now, there's nothing visible. Let's start and try to first see something. The top interval metric. So I can choose one metric from my data set to be plotted as the top interval line. And I already have a, an upper bound metric, which is a number that is always more than uh, my main metric. So this is a sample fake data set. So this is my upper bound. And I will drag and drop to the top interval metric. Still nothing because we want to see an area. I will drag and drop my lower bound metric here and boom. So we have now a band, a shaded band between these two values per day. So for each day, we have a bottom, we have a top. And anything between these two lines is shaded with this color. So I can change the color really like this highlighted yellow or maybe this one okay to show the ranges that i expect now it's time for us to give it a name a, a label because the name is still not visible but if you hover on any values let's yeah so we can see number of sales and then we can see interval number one between seven and ten so i can call it expected range right now if i hover over the chart I can see, I should be able to see, yep, expected range between 7 and 10, it's 8, so it's fine. Now that we have the interval 
visible. Let's change the type. So we have area, we have bar interval, which if I zoom in, you can see there is a line with some horizontal text at the beginning of the end. This is nice if we want to have something that is a little bit less prominent. Okay. We've got box interval, which is still nice. Uh, in some cases, I would prefer this as is an area interval. We have a stick interval, which is just the line itself, just the vertical line itself. Point interval, just showing the points. And finally, we've got line interval, which only shows the upper and lower lines and doesn't shade the area between them. Now, this is only one mode. So the first mode was upper, top and bottom. We have some other modes as well. So we have center and width. Depending on the type of the data that we are working with, right now I have number of cells, I have the values for lower bound, I have the values for upper bound. But let's say we don't have that. We know that we always want to show an area, a boundary, like five more and five less than the actual value. In that case, we have center and width. So for the center interval metric, we have the uh, main metric number of cells, which is basically the same line that is going from first to the end of January. And then we can define a metric that is the width. So for example, if I use my upper bound as the width, then on each day, the value that I have for upper bound will be added and deducted from that metric to create the lower. Okay. This is something that might look a little bit strange. So let me create a field and actually put the value of five. I will call it five. It will be five and it will be a number. So right now I'm telling Lucre Studio that whatever value I have as number of cells, I want the area to start from a number that is the number of cells minus five and go to number of sales plus five. And if I click here and reduce it to two, then we will have a very narrow shaded area over here, okay? This might be useful in some cases, especially if you have another metric which actually has the width of the interval for you. And we have some other ways like range, confidence interval, the standard error and standard deviation as well, which I'm not going through all of them in this video. One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that we can have, just like reference line, we can have additional intervals. So for example, let me put this on top and bottom, right? And I add additional interval. And this time I would uh, make it a point interval. And here I want center and width. And then for the center, I want my lower bound, which is a little bit strange. So the lower bound is now my sensor. And for interval metric, I want the value of eight, eight above and eight below my actual lower bound. I want to highlight it with points. And here we can see that it is showing eight above and eight below my lower bound metric with points. And I can change this from points to I don't know, boxes or whatever. So we can have multiple intervals on the same chart if we need. It will be cluttered. I mean, in many cases, I won't really do that unless I have several metrics and I want to show several different scenarios or intervals, but know that it is possible and you're not limited to having only one interval or shaded area for your time series. That's it. It's time for you to go think about all the charts you have, all the dashboards you have, all the reports you have, and see when and where there might be an opportunity to add an interval and make it easier to read or easier to interpret or add more context to the values that you presented in your visualizations. Thank you very much and bye.